Hey everyone, my name is Anne and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to crochet this plum puff sleeve sweater. I'll be making a small here, but sizes X small to 3X large are also included in this video and in the written pattern that I have linked down below, so please go check it out. So yeah, here are all, all the supplies you're going to be needing. So here are all of the supplies you're going to be needing for this project. I have a large tapestry needle. You're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter hook, as well as any pair of scissors you have on hand. You can also use a ruler or any kind of measuring tape as well. The yarn I have over here is the um, Caron one pound yarn. This is what the packaging looks like. I've already used some of it and I have this in the color light violet and this is just a category four yarn. So once you have grabbed all of your supplies, we're going to go ahead and get started on working the pattern. So now beginning on the back panel, I have over here my category 4 yarn and this is my 5.5 millimeter hook. I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot. And you can do this any way you would like. After this slip knot, you want to go ahead and make a chain of 51. And to make a chain, all you want to do is yarn over and pull through. Again, just yarn over and pull through until you have a total of 51 chains. So I have just made it back here with my chain of 51. Once you have completed your chain, we're going to begin on row one. So beginning on row one, skip this first chain and inserting our hook into the second chain, we're going to work a single crochet. To work a single crochet, go ahead and insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through both of those loops. Working another single crochet, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through both of these loops now just continue to work these single crochets into each chain all the way across so i'm just going to go all the way down my chain and then i will see you guys back once i have reached the end So as you guys can see, I have just finished working all the way down my chain with these single crochets. And once you have reached the very end, you do want to go ahead, chain one, and turn your work. Moving on to row two, you want to skip this first turning chain and inserting our hook into this first stitch. We're going to work a single crochet just like this. And now just continue to work single crochets into each stitch all the way down your row. So I'm going to go ahead, work these single crochets, and then I'm going to see you guys back once again once I reach the end of my row. So once you have worked these single crochets into each stitch all the way down your row, we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. Just chain one and turn your work. So to continue the pattern for our back panel, this is really simple. All you want to do is just repeat row two, which is this row with our single crochets into each stitch until you have a total of 78 rows for your back panel. You can go ahead and make this back panel however long or short you would like. So you can make any number of rows here. I'm going to make 78. So I'm going to work up my 78 rows and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done with my back panel. Alright guys, so I have made it back here with my back panel. 
I worked up 78 rows and this is what the length is looking like so far. Now that we have our back panel all done, we're going to, we're not going to cut and tie, uh, tie off just yet. We're actually going to continue to work the front panel from here. So again, do not cut and fasten off. We're going to work the front panel. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So moving on to the front panel, I have already chained one and turned my work around. Now beginning on row one into this first stitch, we're going to work we're going to work 10 single crochets across our row. So you're not going to be going all the way across your row, only into 10 stitches. So once you've worked into these 10 stitches across your row, you can go ahead, chain one, and turn your work. Now moving on to row two and to this very first stitch, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to increase into this first stitch. To increase, work one single crochet. Now into the same stitch, you want to work another single crochet. So you basically want to work two single crochets into this one stitch. Now work single crochets into each stitch all the way across your row. Once you have reached the end, chain one and turn your work. So moving on to row three, this is a very easy row. Beginning into this first stitch, all you wanna do is just single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And then as usual, chain one and turn. So to continue this pattern for our front panel, all you wanna do here is that you want to repeat row two and row three until you have a total of 30 rows. But basically you should be doing an increase on row two every other row on this one side of your work and that's gonna make your work come in this way. So yes, do an increase every other row and until you have a total of 30 rows for your front panel. I'm going to work up my 30 rows with my increases and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done. So now this is what my front panel is looking like after I did my increases. So basically one side should stay a nice clean straight edge and this is where we did our increases every other row. So I have 30 rows in total and now the last thing we're going to do for our front panel is just do regular rows of single crochets not doing any kind of increases for 48 rows. And the reason why we're doing 48 more rows is because we did 78 rows for the back panel and we just want this to match up with our back panel and just reach all the way to the end. So I'm going to do 48 more rows of just regular single crochet rows and then I'm going to see you guys back to cut and fasten off for our front panel. So I have just finished working up my 48 rows. So we did 30 rows of increases and then we did 48 rows of regular single crochets and now that we have reached the end I'm going to go ahead cut and fasten off so I'll just cut my yarn and then with my hook I'll just yarn over and pull through just to knot it and now this is what one half of our front panel is looking like now that we have done one half, we're going to pretty much do the same thing but on the other side of our work. So we're going to set this aside and now we're going to get started on working the second front panel. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So 
So now getting started on the second front panel, I'm going to first make a slip knot. Once you have made your slip knot, you want to skip 30 unworked stitches and insert your hook into that 31st stitch. So what that means is that I'm going to count 30 stitches. So this is the first unworked stitch right here. I'm going to skip 30. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then insert your hook into this 31st stitch just like this. Now, once you have inserted your hook, you want to yarn over, pull through, and that's going to be our slip stitch. Beginning on row one, you just want to chain one. And now beginning into this very first stitch, which is, which is the stitch that we slip stitched into, you want to single crochet into each stitch across. And once you reach the end, you should have a total of 10 stitches, just as we did on the opposite side. So I'm just going to do this, I'm going to do this with you guys. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then ten chain one and turn your work so moving on to row two and to this first stitch we're going to single crochet and do each stitch across until you have one stitch at the end remaining And so once you have this last stitch at the end of your row, we're going to work an increase. So once you have this last stitch at the end of your row, we're going to work an increase. So I'm going to insert my hook. That's one single crochet. Back into the same stitch for two single crochets. So you should have worked two single crochets into this one stitch. From here, chain one and turn. So moving on to row three and to this very first stitch, we're just going to single crochet into each stitch across your row. Now, once you have a single crochet into each stitch across your row for row three, to continue this pattern, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the opposite side. You want to repeat row two with that increase and row three until you have a total of 30 rows. And just like last time again, you're basically going to be increasing every other row on one side of your work. So I'm going to work up my 30 rows doing an increase every other row. And then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done. So this is what my 30 rows of increases is looking like. I repeated row two and row three for 30 rows. And now to continue the second half of our front panel, we're going to do 48 regular, we're going to do 48 more regular rows of single crochets, just as we did for this side. So we're just going to go straight down until the end of our back panel. So I'm going to quickly work up those 48 rows of just regular single crochets without the increases. And then I'm going to see you guys back once again to cut and fasten off. So this is what my work is looking like after I have finished up my last 48 rows for the second front panel. I did go ahead and cut and fasten off as you can see. Now that we have both of our front panels and our back panel, we're going to move on to seaming the bodice together. We're going to do both of the sides. So that's going to be the next step to our project. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So now we're going to be seaming our bodice together. For that, I have my large tapestry needle and some yarn. I have woven the yarn through my tapestry needle. 
And what we're gonna do here is that starting into this very bottom corner, we're going to whip stitch all the way up the side until you have seven and a half inches from the top remaining. And the seven and a half inches from the top is gonna leave room for our sleeves. But I'm going to show you guys how to whip stitch. So I'm going to insert my tapestry needle into the first stitch of the front panel and into that next stitch for the, for the back panel. Just pull that through. And now coming back around, I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch, and then into the next stitch of the back panel and just pull through once again. Coming back again, inserting my hook into the next two stitches and then just pull straight through. Into the next two stitches, just like this, and then pull through. And just as I said, you want to continue to whip stitch until you have seven and a half inches from the top. So I have my ruler and I'm going to go until I have seven and a half inches from the top for my sleeve. So I'm going to work this up and then I will see you guys back for the next steps. So I have just finished working or whip stitching all the way up the side until I had seven and a half inches from the top for our sleeve. And once you have completed one side, you do want to repeat the same process for the opposite side, of course. So I'm going to work this up and then I'm going to see you guys back in a little bit. So I have just finished working up both of my sides. I did this side and then also this side as well. That's all we're going to do for seaming up our bodice. The next step to our project is going to be working on the sleeves. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the sleeves. So beginning on the sleeves, I have my yarn and my hook. I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot. Now with our hook, insert it right into the seam of our armhole. So I'm going to insert my hook right into the seam. And then now slip stitch to secure. So just yarn over and pull through everything just like this. So now our hook is nicely secured into our armhole. Beginning on the foundation row, you want to chain one. Now beginning into this very first stitch, you want, we're going to be single crocheting into each row all the way around until the end. So to do that, into this very first stitch, I'm going to single crochet. Now into the next row, I'm also going to make another single crochet. Into the next row, single crochet just like this and now just continue on working all the way around the armhole until you have reached the end of your work So once you have finished working this foundation row of single crochets coming all the way around the armhole, into this very first stitch, we're just going to slip stitch to join this row. So into this very first stitch, I'm just going to yarn over, pull through everything. And now that's just going to seal the foundation row for us. From here, we're now going to make a chain of 55, but you can go ahead and make your sleeve however long you would want. I'm going to make a full sleeve, so I'm making a chain of 55 over here. So 
So once you have finished up working your chain, beginning on row one, we're going to insert our hook into the second chain and we're simply going to single crochet into each chain all the way down until the end. So once you have finished working all the way down your chain with these single crochets, to connect this row to the side, we're going to be slip stitching up two stitches on our armhole. To show you how to do that, I'm just going to insert my hook into this very first stitch, slip stitch, and then into the next stitch as well, slip stitch up two, and these two slip stitches up the side do not count as our stitch, as our first stitch for the next row. So now I'm going to turn my work, moving on to row two, into this very first stitch. So we're going to basically skip these first two slip stitches and insert our hook into this first stitch. We're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way down our row until the end of our work. So once you have made it to the end of your row, you just want to chain one and turn your work. Moving on to row three, we're going to single crochet into each stitch all the way down our row. And then I'm going to show you how to join this row once I reach the end. Once you have made it to the end of row three, we're going to attach this row to the side of our armhole just as we did for row one. The only difference here is that we're not going to be slip stitching up two, we're actually going to slip stitch just up one stitch on the side. So into the next stitch, I'm just going to insert my hook and then slip stitch to join that row. Turn my work around. Now moving on to row four, into this first stitch, so you're going to skip this one slip stitch because it does not count as a stitch. And into this first stitch, I'm just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way down my row for row four. And once you reach the end of row four, you're going to just chain one and turn your work. Now moving on to row five, and this is gonna be our last repeat row. Into this first stitch, we're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way down our work. And then I'm going to show you how to join this row once I reach the end of my work. And once you reach the end to join row five to the side of our of our sleeve or of our armhole I mean we're going to slip stitch up two on the side so I'm just going to insert my hook slip stitch up one and then slip stitch up two on the side just like this now to continue this pattern for our sleeve you want to repeat the last four rows which is row two to row five until you have worked all the way around the armhole so as you can see, we have been working up the sleeve or the armhole with these slip stitches. And now you basically just want to do that all the way around until you reach the end of your work. So I'm going to finish up the sleeve, repeating those last four rows, and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done. Now this is what my sleeve is looking like after I have worked all the way around the armhole repeating those last four rows. Um, as you can see we have this space that we do need to seam up first. So when I cut and fastened off I left a very long strain of yarn. 
we're going to use our tapestry needle to seam this all the way down until the end of our work when you seam your sleeve you of course want to make sure that your work is inside out so the wrong side is facing you so then when we flip it back side out the good side is going to be facing us so I'm going to use this yarn just seam up my sleeve and then after we have done that we can now begin on the cuff so I'm going so I'm going to work that up and then I will see you guys back very shortly I have made it back here and I have just finished working up the side of my sleeve. So now this is what our complete sleeve is looking like so far. I did flip my work back side out so this is the good side that is facing us right now. So once we have our sleeve, we're going to get started on working the cuff with some decreases. So yeah, let's jump on with those instructions. So now we're going to be moving on to the cuff at the end of our sleeve. So I have my hook and my yarn. I'm going to make a slip knot just like this. Now I'm going to insert my hook right into the seam of my sleeve and then slip stitch to secure. Chain one. Now we're first going to begin with a foundation row as you probably expected. Into each row all the way around we're going to work one single crochet. So into this very first row, I'm going to work a single crochet. Into the next row, work a single crochet, and then just keep on doing this into each row all the way around your sleeve. So I have just finished working all the way around my sleeve with these single crochets. Now to join the foundation row, I'm just going to slip stitch into this very first stitch, just like this, chain one and turn my work. Moving on to row one, into this very first stitch, we're going to work a decrease into each stitch all the way around. To work a single crochet decrease, I'm going to insert my hook into this first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert my hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all three. And I want to show you guys how to do this one more time. We're going to insert, insert your hook, pull up a loop, insert your hook to that next stitch, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through all three. Now just repeat doing these decreases into each stitch all the way around your sleeve. And once you have made it all the way around your sleeve with these decreases, we're going to slip stitch into this first stitch to join row one. After that, just chain one and turn your work. Now moving on to row two, this is just going to be a repeat of row one. So you just want to decrease into each stitch all the way around until the end. This is going to be our last decrease row until we start working on the main cuff section. So I'm just going to go ahead, work this up, and then I will see you guys back once I have reached the end. So I just finished working that last decrease row. For row two, I did slip stitch into this first stitch to join. Now moving on to the main cuff section, we're going to begin with a chain of eight. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Moving on to row one into this second chain, we're just going to single crochet into each chain all the way down our row. Once you have finished working these single crochets into these seven chains to join this row to the bottom of our sleeve, we're going to slip stitch up two. So that's one. We we'll have to do that again. This is my first slip stitch, and then here is the second. And then just turn your work. 
now moving on to row two we're into this first stitch those two slip stitches up the side do not count as a stitch so beginning into this first stitch we're going to back bar single crochet into each stitch across until one stitch remains at the end to back bar slip stitch instead of inserting your hook into both of these loops as you normally would we're only going to insert our hook into this back bar just like this yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two so again just insert your hook only into this back bar pull through pull through two and then just work this down your row i'm almost at the end and then once you have one stitch at the end of your row, we want, we want to work one regular single crochet just like this and then chain one, turn your work. Moving on to the last repeat row, which is row three. And to this first stitch, we're gonna work one regular single crochet. Now we're going to work back bar single crochets until the end of your row. So just work into those back loops only. And then once you have made it to the end with these back bar single crochets, just as we did for row one, you want to slip stitch up two on the side. So that's one. Then here is two. And that's just going to join the row just like this. Now to continue the pattern for our cuff, this is really simple. You want to repeat row two and row three with these back bar single crochet rows until you've worked into each stitch all the way around the base so i'm going to work that up and then i'm going to see you guys back once i am all done with my sleeve Now, this is what my sleeve is looking like after I repeated row two and row three coming all the way around the base. And I did cut and fasten off. And just as we did for the sleeve, I left a long piece of yarn that we're gonna to use to seam the cuff together. So I'm just going to use my tapestry needle, seam this up, and then that's gonna be the end of our sleeve and our cuff. So I'm going to seam this up and then I'm going to see you guys back for the finished sleeve. I am back here and I have just finished seaming up the cuff. This is what it is looking like at the end of our work. So now our sleeve is done and our cuff is all done. Now once you have done that one time, you want to of course repeat this on the opposite armhole. So I have both of my sleeves on in my cuff on the opposite side as well. So I have both of these and now that we have both of our sleeves and cuffs we're going to get started on working the bottom border so let's go ahead and get started on that Now we're going to be moving on to working the bottom border of our work. So we're going to start from this corner and then we're going to work all the way around to the opposite end. So I'm just going to make a slip knot first and then insert my hook into one of these corners. I'm just going to insert my hook right into this first stitch and then slip stitch to secure. Now we're going to make a chain of one. Into this first stitch, we're going to work double crochets into each stitch all the way around until you have met the opposite corner. So to work a double crochet, into this first stitch, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that's our first double crochet. Doing this again, you just want to yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two. And now again, just work these double crochets into each stitch coming, going all the way around your edge. And then I'm going to see you guys back once I have reached the end over here. Thank you. 
This is what my work is looking like after I have finished these double crochets coming all the way around the edge. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but you do want to have an even number of stitches, even if there's not an exact number. So just make sure that your stitches are even. So I'm just going to chain one and turn my work. Moving on to row two, into this very first stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet. To work a front post double crochet, just yarn over, insert your hook behind this post, just like this, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Into this next stitch, we're going to work a back post half double crochet. To work a back post half double crochet, you want to yarn over once again. Now insert your hook right behind this post, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. Into this next stitch, we're going to work another front post double crochet. So I'm just going to yarn over, insert into the front of this post, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, pull through two. Into the next stitch, work a back post double crochet, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. So what we did here is that we worked a front post, a back post, a front post, and back post double crochets. And now to continue this border, you just want to work alternating these front and back post double crochets coming all the way around, just as I am showing you guys. So I'm going to finish working this border and then I'm going to see you guys back once I have reached the end of my work. As you guys can see, I have just finished working all the way around my border, alternating my front and back post double crochets. And as you can see, it makes a really pretty pattern to our work that I really like. So to continue this pattern, you want to repeat this row, which was row two with our front and back post double crochet stitches, until you have a total of seven rows. Though you can make this bottom border however long you would like. I'm just choosing to make seven, but you can stop here or go however long. But I'm basically just going to work up my seven rows, and then I'm going to see you guys back to cut and fasten off. Now this is what my bottom border is looking like after I have finished my seven rows. Then of course I did cut and fasten off once I reached the end. So now we're going to move on to the very last step to our sweater. We're going to be working the front border coming all the way up and around. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the front border. So now we're going to get started on working the front border. We're going to go all the way up and around until we meet the opposite corner. So I have my hook and I'm going to make a slip knot. Now just insert your hook into the very bottom corner. And I'm just going to slip stitch to secure. I'm just going to yarn over and pull through everything. Now just chain one. So the first step to our front border is going to be working a foundation row. So what we're going to do is that into each of these rows, we're going to work one double crochet. So just working into these side rows, starting into this first stitch, I'm just going to work double crochets coming all the way up and around. And then I'm going to see you guys back once I have reached the opposite corner on the other side.
So this is what my work is looking like after I worked these double crochets into each row all the way around until I reached the end of my work. So to continue this pattern for the front border, we're basically going to do the exact same thing that we did for the bottom border. So from row one or from row two to four, you want to work those same front post and back post double crochets. I've already showed you guys how to work the border. But yeah, just alternate your front and back post double crochets all the way around. Do that for three more rows or for however long you would want your front border to be. And that's going to be the end of our sweater. So since I've already showed that on camera, as I mentioned, I'm just going to work up this front border with my post and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done. As you guys can see, I have finished working my front border. I have four rows in total, and I went all the way up and around just like this. And we did the same thing, alternating our front and back post double crochets. That was all you had to do. After you have finished making your front border, we're going to move on to working the pockets that we're going to add down below here. But you don't have to add this, this is a totally optional step, but the next part of this video is going to be adding some very simple pockets to the end. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on that last step. So now we're going to be moving on to working the last part of our project, which is going to be the pockets over here. You can make these pockets however long or wide you would like, but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a slip knot. And then I'm going to make a chain of 15, but again, you can make this however long you would like. After you have your chain of 15 beginning into the second chain, we're going to single crochet into these 14 stitches across. Once you have made it to the end of your chain with these single crochets, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work. Moving on to row two into this first stitch, we're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way down our row. Once you have made it to the end of this row, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work. But to continue this pattern for our pocket, you want to repeat this row, which is row two, until you have a total of 12 rows. But as I mentioned at the beginning, you can make this however long you would like. I'm just going to choose to make 12 rows. So I'm going to work up my 12 rows and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done with my work. So I have just been working up my 12 rows and the next two rows we're just going to add some ribbing just as we did for the bottom border and for the front border. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and now beginning into this first stitch we're going to be working double crochets going all the way across our row. So just beginning into this first stitch I'm just going to work these regular double crochets and then the next row we're going to do is we're going to do those front and back post double crochets once I reach the end. And once you reach the end of your double crochet row, I'm just going to chain one, turn my work. Now for the very last row for our pocket, beginning into this first stitch, we're going to alternate our front post double crochets and then our back post double crochets. So just into this first stitch, I'm going to work one front post, just like this, and then one back post. And then just keep on working this all the way down your row.
Once you have made one, of course you want to repeat this entire process a second time for the opposite side as well. And once you have both of those pockets, you can just whip stitch all the way around, leaving this top portion open for your pocket. So I'm going to do this same thing a second time and then just attach them to the very bottom front of our front panel. So I'm going to work that up and then I'm going to see you guys back once I am all done with my cardigan. So as you guys can see, I have just finished attaching the pockets, both of, both of the pockets, to the front panel. You can position, the, position this however way you would like. But after you have finished with the pockets, that is pretty much all you have left for your cardigan. The last thing that you would need to do is just weave in all of your loose ends, which I have already done. But after you have weaved in all of your loose ends, that is the end of the project and the end of this tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed and found this helpful and I will see you guys back next time. Bye! If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. If you bought this pattern, it would be super helpful if you left a positive review. But that's all guys, bye!